In front of me are nine blown glass unguentaria or perfume bottles from the Roman period. They date to around the 1st to 3rd century AD. Now, although it's very common to find iridescence on ancient glass, what makes this set so remarkable is this pearlescence, this very silvery white and thick surface. The surface, when you turn it in the light, catches it so beautifully. And this is something that, that cannot be faked, it cannot be applied, at least not successfully. And it only can occur when it's been buried for hundreds of years. It's one of those marvels of antiquities that come down to us now, where they might have been created to look in a certain way, but because of the time and, and how well they've survived, because all of these are intact, they've now changed their form and become even more alluring. Um, and I think, you know, designs like this, and indeed the surface, um, has almost a very modern element to it. You see um, glass makers like Tiffany have tried to reproduce this in recent times. Now we have three of the main different forms. Um, one, which I think is the most beautiful and interesting, is what we call the cottage loaf, which, as you can imagine, is named after those old cottage loaves of bread, um, which had this sort of wonderful, sort of double bulbous nature to them. This one here that I'm showing you has, of the pearl essence, you can see goes from that whiter to very silvery, almost looking like mercury. It's really, really beautiful. Then you have the more bulbous type, and then you have these, what can often look like um, sort of bell unguentaria, you might call them, or just really uh, the, the squished sphere where it's got a slight constriction at the neck. And you can just imagine them blowing this little ball and then pushing it against the surface and creating with the, with the, the tongs a little constriction. And they're very elegant as well with the particularly long necks, which again is a marvel as to how these have survived so well. Now, glass blowing was invented in the first century BC, but glass making had been around for about three millennia previously. And it was only in the first century BC that the Romans discovered how to get the furnaces hot enough so that the glass or the sand that they were the melting into glass could become so viscous that they could blow it instead of molding it or, or drooping it over a form as they had previously done. And when this happened, not only could they create more elaborate designs, more beautiful colours, more interesting and, and large and different scales, but it increased the level of production. And people stopped having you know, the amount of time it would take to create a, a pottery jar, as they normally would have used to hold um, unguents, you know, perfumes, precious oils, that kind of thing. They started mass producing glass because not only was it more glamorous, but they could churn out a lot more of them. And it's for this reason that you will see collections like this where a single owner would have had several that you were for the same purpose, but were there to fill many different oils. They wouldn't be restricted in number because they could go down and buy several of these bottles at once.